Welcome back gamers, it's Nico from Need to Know, and today we're looking at Utopia 9, a volatile vacation by Willgun for the Nintendo Switch. It's a twin stick shooting good time. For a roguelike, it's definitely a lot of fun, but it does have its share of problems. So, let's check it out. You're bored in your cubicle farm, so what do you do? See an ad on TV for a fantastic vacation. And now, you're gonna sue the travel agency. Why? Well, the resort is a total scam, and you're having to kill your way to freedom. I mean, that sounds cool, but seriously though, think of the settlement you get. Anywho, you're a tourist trapped, and you have to survive the onslaught of the bloodthirsty mutants. The levels are bright and colorful, music is quirky, and the challenge is definitely there for a top-down roguelike. Oh, and if you're new to this genre, you will start over every time you die and lose everything including progress, aka permadeath. The map on the lower right helps you figure out which doors you can go through and if a mutated enemy lies within. Various weapons can be placed in either hand for added effect, maybe you want a melee hand in one and a blaster in the other. Knock yourself and those mutants out. If you're playing with a friend, it's worth noting that health and ammo are shared, so if you love keeping your finger on the trigger, you might want to scale back a bit. You have over 40 weapons, including your trusty suitcase, and you can play solo or with a buddy so you and your friend can recoup those tasty benefits of that settlement. The game plays, eh, okay, and the controls feel, meh, more on that later. Right thumbstick turns, L, R, and Z, R are primary and secondary fire, while the left moves your tourist around. The directional buttons cycle through your gear and weapons, L is for utility and R is to jump. Enemies come from all directions, so keep your eyes peeled and your wits about you. Things can get very hairy very quickly. Levels are short with plenty of loot and weapons in between should you find them. Each level has varying loots to collect, as shown here on the map. Some will have armor and some will have weapons. There are some opportunities to get health by smashing the barrels and things around you, but not much. It just felt like the game punishes you for dying or getting hurt and doesn't really give you much to recover. There is a lot of replayability given the nature of the game, since you can't see all the levels in one playthrough with how the map is structured. It's designed in such a way that you must choose a path and you can't backtrack. If you die and restart, you can pick up where you left off, but if you die, quit, then come back, it's back to level 1. Something interesting to note here is that when you die, an enemy will mutate, evolve, and steal your things. When you start over, you can choose to go to the level where you died and kill this mutated monster to steal back the loot he took from you your first go round. They are marked on your minimap on the lower right. Speaking of mutations, as you play through the level, you'll obtain Soylent that grants the ability to mutate. These are skills and mutations that can help you along your playthrough. Now, bear in mind, these are skills are single playthrough only. These do not carry over into the new game, and the types of mutations available can change with each run as well, so don't get comfortable choosing the very same ones. One thing that does carry over are the travel points. As you progress through the level, you get them. These are the points that you use at the DNA stand. Here, there are an assortment of power-ups that can help you along the way. They don't carry over when you start the level, but can be selected when you get to the station. Even when you quit the game and return, the power-ups you unlocked remain. Now, the cons. The game looks the same everywhere. The corridors, the rooms, the stations, all look the same. It's procedurally generated, but only to an extent. Things are mostly rearranged in the level but the level itself does not change. And if the game is too difficult for you, tough tiddlywinks, because there's no way to change it. I played docked with both Joy-Cons, and the controls at times felt very awkward, and my hands did cramp a little bit. Because you don't fire with the right thumbstick like some traditional twin-stick shooters, the controls are separate, and that led to me mostly fumbling. Not only that, there look to be only one other character to unlock, and you can't really select between the two that are there. The button, for some reason, didn't cycle. Verdict? Recommended. 
The game often feels like it's trying to be a survival, twin-stick arcade shooter and doesn't quite bind them together as nicely as I feel it should. Despite this, the game is still fun to play and possibly more with a friend. It may handle better with a pro controller, but was still okay with the Joy-Cons. The quirky character's unique revenge system and overall replayability make Utopia a good time, although a very short getaway. Utopia 9, a volatile vacation by Willgun for the Nintendo Switch, is a bundle of great ideas and concepts that somehow manages to work in spite of its flaws. This has been Need to Know, and I'm Nico. Stay in the know, gamers.